Welcome to EPG Parsala on the subject Social Medicine in Community Health. I am Dr. C.P. Mishra, Professor in the Department of Community Medicine Institute of Medical Sciences, Balas Hindu University. And I shall be discussing the module National Health Mission Part 1. This module belongs to paper National Health Program and Policies. This module has been developed by a team comprising of myself, Dr. D.K. Taneza, Dr. Niki Rustogi and Dr. Vikati Banerji. The learning objectives that has been set for this model is that after going through this session, one should be able to get acquainted with targeted outcomes for National Health Mission in the 12th plan for communicable diseases, to be aware of the institutional structure for implementation of National Health Program and understand the critical areas for concerted action usage in the national system. Now, as you all know that uh, we launched National Rural Health Mission in 2005 and the experiences gained by different states in the last seven years were, were enormous. Therefore, Government of India decided that looking at the problems of urban areas because there are certain pockets and certain areas in our particularly urban slums which are growing fast in our country. The health scenario is worse than the rural areas. And therefore, there is an urgent need in urban areas because in spite of having so many private practitioners, clinics, hospitals, community-based care in urban areas is lacking. And therefore, Government of India thought that let us start a new program, National Urban Health Mission. So, the combination, the amalgamation of the National Rural Health Mission and National Urban Health Mission, which was approved by the cabinet on 1st June 2013. And therefore, we of these programs were amalgamated relating in National Health Mission. The targeted outcomes for National Health Mission in the 12th plan, the 12th plan, the period from 2012 to 2017, the number is one is to reduce maternal mortality rate to one per 100,000 live births, reduce infant mortality rate to 25 per 1,000 live births, and reduce total fertility rate to 2.1. It means that the earlier the target for, for TFR was to be achieved to 2.1 in the year 2010. Some of the states in southern India have al already achieved this, these targets. However, TFR in many populous states of the country much more than 2.1. So the target that has been envisaged is that we should be able to achieve by 2017 the target of total fertility rate to 2.1 so that we can reach to the replacement fertility level. Prevention and reduction of anemia and women aged 15 to 49 years, in spite of running so many programs for, since 1970, anemia remains a significant problem in our country. It affects quality of life, it affects performance of a person. It, it is related to uh, physical disabilities and uh, it contributes significantly to the low birth weight, perinatal mortality and so on. So anemia uh, reduction is a priority area of action in the 12th plan. The next uh, targeted outcome is to prevent and reduce mortality and morbidity from communicable, non-communicable diseases, injuries and emerging diseases and to reduce household out-of-pocket expenditure on the total health care expenditure. The 12th plan primarily directs towards reducing catastrophic out-of-pocket expenditure. In fact, nearly 2% of the India's population below poverty line, 2% uh, of India's population goes below poverty line every year just because of catastrophic expenditure. Reduce annual incidence and mortality from tuberculosis by half. 
reduced prevalence of leprosy to less than 1 per 10,000 population and incidence to zero in all districts. Bring out an annual malaria parasite incidence to less than 1 per 1,000, less than 1 per 1,000 of malaria prevalence in all the districts. So these are some of the targets and Kalajar elimination has been proposed that is less than one case per 10,000 population in all blocks in the uh, concerned areas. Institutional structure for implementation of national health mission has been envisaged. At the national level, we have mission steering group. That this group is chaired by Union Minister of Health and Family Welfare, and he is assisted by secretaries and mission directors and so on. The second body that is Empowered Program Committee is at the national level, which looks after about the all the technical issues related to the implementation of NRHM, Urban Health Mission, and therefore in combination as NHM as a whole. We have National Health Systems Resource Center, which is an apex body for technical inputs, and National Institute of Health and Family Welfare is the apex institution providing uh, human resource development through training and other initiatives. As a, at the national level in the state, we have a state health mission which is chaired by Chief Minister of the state. And any program that is chaired by the Chief Minister of the state has a lot of implications in terms of implementation and quality services. State Health Society is there, which took, uh, takes into cognizance the issues related to implementation of the NHM in the, at the state level. Similarly, at the district health mission and city health mission or district health uh, society, which is headed by chief of the Jilla Panchayat, uh, where rural predominance is there, and also the uh, mayor of the city, if it is an urban based district. A number of health sector reforms for concerted action under NHM is given. Reforms are needed in the health sector because we are not going to much achieve much if we are going in the direction in the stereotype manner. Therefore, there, there has been a lot of flexibility in the national health mission in terms of decentralized health planning, facility based service delivery, the district hospital knowledge center, outreach services. Community processes, behavioral change communication, addressing social determinants, social protection, social protection, uh, protection function of the public health services, and partnership with various civil societies and for profit private sector organizations. Hemo resource development, public health management. Health of the tribal and populations in left wing extremist affected areas, health for urban poor, piloting on universal health coverage, and health management information systems and governance and accountability framework. So, these 14 areas of measure of concern is envisaged in the urban health mission. Number one is the decentralized health planning. Key strategy is district city health action plan, which will be used as an essential instrumental instrumental change. This preparation of district and city health action plan should be based on socio epidemiological profile of the district. Emphasis on people living in difficult and remote ham hamlets, migrants, SCST population. And primitive tribal groups and other such population, including the poor, homeless, street children, construction migrant workers, rag pickers, vendors, beggars, sex workers, and so on. So, anybody which is a, 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 who come, is identified in the vulnerability analysis, they will serve as the basis for planning of the district 
or city health action plan which is based not, not based on only one person decision it includes consultations from, from key stakeholders people's representatives community organizations such as self help groups mahila arogya samiti mahila arogya samiti and other community based organizations especially representative uh, marginalized communities and local ngos as per the district and city health society and jila district planning committee and the chief, these bodies will give approval to this roll up district city health action plan it will serve as the basis for capacity in technical skill building it will be vital to promote the equity in the district it will serve as great form for enabling decentralization convergence and integration between different sectors which are involved for health care and it will serve as instrument for progress towards the provision of universal health care for which government of india is committed now this universal health coverage refers to provisions of health services irrespective of the ability of uh, and capacity of paying by by the patients and uh, irrespective of caste creed social dis discrimination gender and so on now components of facility development plan will include number 1 infrastructure building building new facilities on the basis of population norms utilization of existing facilities and disease burden the idea is that since the population in certain area pockets are more dense than in other pockets if necessary new infrastructure can be created provision and redeployment of human resources drugs and supplies and equipment based on case load the point that is being taken into account that case load is a very significant consideration and that determines the amount of drugs and supplies and equipments are needed because in a area where case load is less there will be less drugs and supplies required and in comparison to other areas where there is a case load is very high then service provisioning that is display of citizen charters and also display of issued list of services that is available each health facility should have which is a poster at the wall or somewhere that what are the services they are rendering and what are the entitlements under which these services are provided to each and every person we cannot go by blanket approach giving equal uh, inputs and logistics to each and every unit of providing health care because the population will differ from each area to other area and therefore that requires a very serious micro plan uh, for facility development as a component of facility development plan quality assurance systems that can be done through strengthening of rogi kalyan samiti with active engagement of panchayat raj institutions in rural areas and urban local bodies in urban areas quality assurance give is a, a biggest motivator for utilization of services it is generally seen that the utilization of public health facilities are low because the credentials attached by the public health for this is less the district hospital and knowledge center each district will have uh, is having district hospital and attempt is being made that there should be a district hospital along with there should, there should be a knowledge center the district hospital and knowledge the district hospital needs to be strengthened to broadly serve the following roles number 1 provide all secondary and considerable elements of tertiary care required to manage most morbidity within the district all secondary services should be provided and provide adequate referral support for clinical care for those cases which are referred from pscs and other community center and serve as the platform for skill based in service training in the medical field when we ever whenever we talk of capacity building knowledge is required essentially required but what is more important that whenever you are imparting training to the health functionaries 
including medical officers, what is required is skill based training. And skill based training requires patients and other necessary facilities so that uh, so the district hospital can serve as a, basic, as a basic unit for that problem. It can function as clinical site for nursing school and college, for paramedical education systems, for a diploma degree in public health, and for a three-year BSc in community health, nursing and other similar programs. Now, it can perform the function of resource support and serve as institutional memory for district planning and data management and analysis. District is the basic unit of administration in India. And if you have database for a district, this will serve as the basis for efficient planning. The, this should act, that is the district hospital and knowledge center should act as the knowledge support for clinical care in facilities below it through telemedicine center located in the at the district headquarters and particularly essential support should be given by centers of excellence, uh, tertiary hospitals or medical colleges. Not least, all district hospitals must provide necessary laboratory support for public health programs. Now, how the services has been considered as an important activity under NHL, National Rural Health Mission. This is the how this uh, services will be extended. Is the first point of delivery is a primary health center and its sub center network. And fortunately, India has a very ex extensive health infrastructure, a network of primary health centers and sub centers. Sub centers are there for 5,000 population and in plain areas and for 3,000 for population in hilly and tribal areas. In rural areas, sub-centers with the, the Anganwadi center at the village level will be the key point for giving uh, out services. Emphasis will be given on effective time to care. That means that healthcare delivery facilities should be within 30 minutes of walking distance from the habitation. Purpose is that the person, if a person has to walk for a long distance, or if time taken for reaching, nowadays many people have communications, but if the time taken to reaching the facilities takes longer, larger time, longer time, probably it will be utilized less. Increasing case loads should have mass tumor resource deployed. If a particular center, particular organization has more case load, more health resource should be deployed. So, for example, substance is cutting more than provision, additional provision of additional AM should be done. Mobile medical units for remote, far flung, difficult, and reach to area and urban area slums should be provided. Mobile medical units equipped with all necessary support to provide QOT care and also some of the preventive cares will serve as an important input particularly for those areas, difficult areas. In fact, in the health care, what is more important that any program manager must be concerned and evolve newer strategies for our finding out less performing or, or difficult unreached areas. Untied fund with additional loan allocation to sub-center the difficult consideration should be taken care of. Untied funds are available at the sub-center level and with panchayat and ANM, that is there is there. But there are certain pocket area subcenters where more funds are required and there should be provision for that. Regular refill of the drug drugs the continuity of supply, either it is vaccine or it is drugs, is desired for successful outcomes. Because and that requires a very careful planning. Now, the list essential drug list, standard treatment guidelines must be evolved for levels of facility so that the whatever 
provisions are made, financial provisions are made, that should be utilized effectively. Community processes, behavioral change, communication, addressing social determinants. A number of social determinants are like poverty, like unhygienic conditions prevailing in the particular area or prevailing. And therefore, through behavior change communication, it should be identified very clear cut that what are the behaviors we want to change. And in order to change that behavior, what kind of critical communication messages are required so that once it is delivered to the people, it influences in them for behavioral change. Key approaches is ASA, Accredited Social Health Activist, will be the strengthen in rural areas and it will be introduced in the urban areas. The Village Health Sanitation and Nutrition Committee, which is going to be converted into participatory health councils, they should be strengthening to develop village health plans for convergent action on social determinants of health and to organize village health and nutrition day. Behavioral change communication through peripheral service providers including ASA and NMS or community level structures is, should be integral part of each and every program and it could be in an independent fashion it could be also a program addressing social determinants through integration to respective district city plans and intersectoral convergence at the state and central levels for policy reforms because so far, uh, many efforts have been given in terms of food, in terms of education, in terms of supply, uh, 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 many roads, electricity. Uh, th these issues should be, uh, so health should be integrated with the developmental act actions so that social status of the people are brought to a higher level. Now, Social protection function of public health services. Most cost effective while making the major part of health services available through public health facilities on cashless basis to reduce out of pocket expenditure. So this requires three things. One, that public health facilities, their quality should be provisions services provided by public health facilities, their quality should be improved. It should be the services should be provided on a continuous basis and no cash is involved by or no cash is to be provided by the users or beneficiaries. Pre provision of diet for inpatients, cashless cashless patient transport systems and emergency response systems. The three things free diet Cashless patient transport systems and emergency response systems should be addressed as immediate public intervention. Care should be exercised that in case of need, a person should be able to reach to a secondary level within two hours from the, their habitat. Social protection initiatives to be considered for the population who are not only poor but also suffer from additional cause of vulnerability and marginalization such as migrant worker. He may not be poor, but there are certain vulnerabilities in him. So he needs a special attention. The homeless, the street children, occupational groups like uh, rack pickers, sanitation workers, transgender population, commercial sex workers and so on. So we have to take into Consolation, partnership with non-governmental organizations, civil society and for the profit private sectors. The purpose of partnership is that wherever the public sector is not reaching or wherever public sector is deficient, the services of NGOs, civil societies and partners uh, uh, the profit private sectors can be taken into account and their 
action should be complementary, complementary to each other. So there should be uh, the partnership will result in enabling additional capacity for range of functions with critical gaps. Please, uh, we, have, we should uh, note that the partnership should be enhanced in renewal in those areas where there are gaps in the critical gaps in the provision of services by the public sector. And whenever partnership is thought of, it should be in the address of the Indian public health standard norms while contracting the services with free, with the private, not for profit or for, for profit sector. To contract in and if contracting is not possible, then outsourcing is, is desired. Especially for non-clinical things, but specialized services such as provision of diet can be outsourced. Emergency transport services can be outsourced. Housekeeping services and diagnostic services can be outsourced. It has been particularly diagnostic services, routine diagnostic services can be taken care of at the primary and secondary levels. However, for specialized services, since the number of cases will be less, so a private sector can be involved in that. Spe specialized clinic services and specific secondary atrocity care services which are part of the shared service for that level of care and are missing. Then utilizing NGOs expertise for community based monitoring of data quality. Why every program manager must be clear where he stands in terms of the problem and what are the deficit or what are the things that has to be achieved over a period of time and that requires a very strong health management information systems or mother and child tracking systems and regarding availability of drugs, monitoring implementation of Jamni Swast Suraksha Karikram and Rasti Bal Swast Karikram and which are working and cashless public private partnership arrangements. The private sector which is providing services, they should not be take any money from the beneficiaries. It is a system that will take care of that. Then human resource development, creation and strengthening of institutions for building capacity at state and sub-state and regional levels. This is very very important that uh, uh, we should prepare that the state institutions should be there which will be utilized for human resource development. In service programs both residential and through distance education mode on family medicine, epidemiology, public health management and such other skills and specialization. Development of bridge courses. By the term bridge courses we mean that if a good performing ASA is there, she, be, she can be given preference for admission to the AM or GNM courses. And we can start other courses like PSC in community health and so that uh, and they can be utilized at the peripheral level for giving comprehensive health care, for providing comprehensive health care. Use of telemedicine to support continuing medical and nursing education and on job support. Telemedicine is being popularized in 12th plan and centers of excellence, particularly medical institutes and medical colleges, they are being identified in nodal agencies for upgrading knowledge in this year. Undertaking regular monitoring and performance audit for proper appraisals through proper appraisal systems. Now, public health management. In fact, this has been this has been the area which is lacking in our country. It is envisaged that specialized public health cadre be created in the country in the, in the form of like uh, we have administrative services, we have other services. Similarly, public health cadre is to be created in our country to infuse managerial expertise into public health services and clinical services. For technical support and hand holding of states resource support to be organized. National institutions like National Institute of Health and Family Welfare, 
All India Institute of Hygiene and Public Health, National Institute of Nutrition, Indian Council of Medical Research Funded Research Institution, School of Public Health, and so many other organizations and NGOs we wrote to meet the technical needs of the district in the program planning and implementation. Health of tribal people and left wing extremist affected areas, key areas to be addressed are undernutrition, particularly, and malnutrition in general, but undernutrition in particular. There are many gender issues in these areas, limited access to health care services, especially conditions like sickle cell anemia, when our Prime Minister is also putting a lot of emphasis on this disease, sickle cell anemia and malaria, and special needs of particularly vulnerable tribal groups. Differential planning is proposed. By the term differential planning, we mean that experience is filling up gaps in human resources and infrastructure. Those areas which are primarily habited by tribal people are left in extremities. There should be no human resource gap. Strengthening home and outreach services both. Then expanding mobile medical units to improve service provision. Good telemedicine backup, especially in rural hospitals. And strengthening of alternative IUs and alternative systems of medicine. Particularly in the tribal pockets, you find that there is a lot of reliance on herbal medicine. If they, that can be used effective strategy to for prevention of malaria and addressing other diseases. Health for the poor, urban poor, addressed to some mission of national urban health mission. National urban health mission. This aims to improve the health status of urban poor, particularly the slum dwellers. Another disadvantage section by facilitating equitable, equitable access to quality health care. Focused attention and health care strategy appropriate to local situation, especially for construction site workers, homeless persons, street children, victims of communicable violence, invisible habitations such as lime and brick clean workers. The state should be given necessary support so that they can identify these areas and Higher resource will be planned wherever is needed. Now, pilot for piloting for universal health coverage. Now, universal health coverage in the 12th plan lays a special focus on designing and piloting approaches towards universal health coverage. Each state would be encouraged to pilot two to three well performing districts for fulfilling the mandatory con conditionalities and preparing activities for the urban health, universal health coverage. The three key preparatory activities are a good baseline measurement of the effective current access to different services and current out-of-pocket expenditure of health care, a good quality district action plan and a health management information system linked to the family health cards and the pilot will see that social protection is ensured and there is no out-of-pocket expenditure. Certainly, health management information system will be strengthened. Full functional health information system facilitating a smooth flow of information from center to national web portal, communicating with. The national web portal is known as communicating with the state and district level systems and other national health information system. Integration of service delivery data through HMIS, mother child tracking systems, hospital information system data, tracking data, niche for mor morbidity through IDSP, mortality data through death reporting, with other management information system data, human resource management systems, financial management system, drug and inventory management systems, and functional private regulatory systems, and so on, so that a comprehensive decision we may get. We get as additional data from National Health and Family Survey and also district level surveys and other. Governance and accountability framework. Governing body would meet annually with the executive committee would meet at least thrice in a year. The society is ensured through a chairperson, member secretary to legislation in parliament. The statutory audit report would mandatory be placed before the uh, governing body of the state health society every year and shall report compliance on the objective society. Auditor. 
At the facility level, the Rogi Kalyan Samiti intensive capacity building will be done. Scorecards would capture the performance of all facilities based on key performance indicators. Periodic concurrent audit, an annual audit for all districts, all accounts down to the district level, increasingly to the block level are currently called. Insistence on the central plan scheme monitoring system. The entire flow of funds would be also visible and monitored from higher levels. So, governance and accountability framework will be important. Now, in order to provide NHM in our country, attainment of universal access to equitable, affordable and quality health services, which will be accountable and responsible to the people's needs with effective intersectoral convergent action to address the social determinants of health will be the key priority in this area. Now, just uh, in this session, we have discussed the 14 important areas where NHM National Health Mission will address to achieve objective setting for the program. Thank you very much for visiting EPG.